Good morning, good morning, good morning, Network Nation. I'm Ron G, a.k.a. your console. I'm coming to you live today on a very special holiday, January the 15th, 2024. The number one network for the nation, by the nation, to the nation, on this Martin Luther King Monday, Martin Luther King Day holiday celebration on Monday. And I have a very interesting uh, discussion to have with you today, a brief, but right on point. But before we get started, a little house cleaning rules. So for those of you who've been following me for the last couple of years, please don't forget to subscribe and the like button below. And also comment, guys. I'd love to hear your comments on this topic. Uh, a lot of the topics that we talk about absolutely don't make uh, much sense without your input and your feedback. So so don't be shy. Um, come in, come on. Welcome to all the conversations. So today I wanted to talk in particularly, uh, obviously it is the Martin Luther King birthday. And consistent with what we do here with the Network Nation, I thought the numbers that posted uh, last week, I wanted to do a, a quick uh, video, but I said, you know what, let me hold off and wait till all the numbers get in. And the numbers that I'm talking about in particular, which I think are very timely, is the income by ethnic group in America. Once again, the household income by ethnic group here in the United States of America. And to start it off, uh, I just wanted to say I'm only going to talk about uh, the top five categories, um, obviously now with a lot of the classifications in this country, you can beg to differ that there could be a lot more other um, groups in here. But for the sake of this particular video, uh, we're going to cover the five groups uh, that we have, which are the Asian Americans, uh, of course, white American, non-Hispanic, uh, Hispanic Americans, and that covers any Hispanic uh, descent, uh, and then of course uh, the Black African American uh, peoples. So, uh, without further ado, uh, also a breakdown of the Asian ethnic group. Just so you know, uh, it does include the uh, Indian, uh, the continent of Asia, India, India, of course, uh, Japan, China, Taiwan, and uh, South Korea. So those all make up the. Uh, Asian ethnic group and so um, since we're on the topic uh, we'll jump right in the, the Asian American group uh, came in at 109.4 uh, for the uh, for their annual income uh, white American non uh, non Hispanic descent 84,110 uh, Hispanic and that is of any Hispanic um, descent 62,005 and um, the African American population uh, bringing up the rear at 5280. Now, I say bringing up the rear and I say that with a mixed uh, bag of emotions and a couple of the reasons uh, why I say that with a mixed bag of emotions because we obviously understand, <coughs> excuse me, the significance of today's holiday. And of course, along with Martin Luther King, who we know this is his day. You had the likes of Roy Wilkins, John uh, 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 Jr., uh, excuse me, A. Philip Randolph, Whitney Young, and, and James Fong, uh, John Wise Jr. And so my point is, is that you had a plethora of people who were willing to pretty much sacrifice and lay their lives down uh, for the cause, right? And the cause was to get equality in this country uh, for African American peoples, right? And so that uh, consisted of uh, fighting the basic battles of, of being able to live in certain areas of certain communities, uh, to have the access to the certain types of education, access to certain types of jobs and incomes and things of that nature, and just have the basic uh, way of American lifestyle um, impact us as a people. And so um, very consistent uh, with what the net worth nation principles are truly all about, right? We all about throwing the lifeline and the playbook to uh, middle class America, which does consist predominantly of uh, the African American community. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have people that have tremendous amounts of wealth now in the African American community. We obviously have seen uh, the evolution of wealth a lot 
more African American CEOs, um, a lot more African American um, superstar athletes uh, from all different athletic walks of life, boxing, um, golf, Tiger, um, and things of that nature. Floyd Mayweather. We can go on and on and on. Um, and then, of course, um, we've seen uh, the African American rise to the highest uh, seat in the land. Uh, of course, several a uh, couple decades ago, uh, through the presidency of. Barack Obama. Now, what does that mean to me and what does that mean to those who laid the foundation down for um, our lives, excuse me, their lives, especially one in particular since today is his day, Dr. Martin Luther King. And we have to ask ourselves, would Dr. King and company be pleased with what they're seeing right now in the African-American community? I have to wonder about that because while we have been and we are free to roam, free to work in certain areas, free to live in certain areas and things of that nature. We have to be honest that it is disturbing that here in the 21st century, um, the African-American um, household uh, finances are still at the bottom of the barrel. Um, and I say that in the heels of education. Uh, now, we do know that uh, a lot of um, our people laid their our ancestors, like Dr. King, laid their lives down so that they could go to college, get a good education, uh, come out, and, and really, really do pretty well for themselves. Uh, but again, uh, the numbers don't lie. Fifty-two thousand dollars annual—that's right around the middle average for the for America as a whole. And so that number is disturbing when you think about all of the opportunities that present themselves to the African-American community. Now, we can obviously go into a few things to say, well, Ron G, there's a lot of things that are also still working against the African-American community, even in the modern era. Um, I'd have to be a, a blind man not to see that of uh, the population of people in prison, the African-American makes up about 38% uh, percent of the inmates that are in prison. And when you consider that we're only 13.6% of the entire population of this country, those numbers are very much in proportion. We also know that while we do see some African-American CEOs, we do know that there does seem to be a target on the back of some African-American males when it comes to certain types of, of careers. You know, the careers, the more higher earn, income earning careers, you have a tendency to, tendency to see other ethnic groups in those CEO and corporate seats, um, VP seats and things like that, uh, than you do see of African-American. Now, that while that could be because we still make up literally a minority, I think it's only like 40 million uh, of us in this country, and that has a lot to say about it. Um, but the reality of it is, is that 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 that's something to look at. Uh, we also know that uh, of 25 years and over, uh, males, which uh, is a pretty significant number, only 22.6 percent of them have a college degree. So that could also be a barrier uh, when you look at the fact that some of those high-end positions do require college degrees, sometimes even doctrine, master's degrees, and so on and so forth. So that could also be a hindrance there. And then, of course, we understand uh, the stop and frisk and the, uh, un un you know, unfortunately, the, the, the false uh, imprisonment of African-American people and kind of like trumped up, you know. I mean, yes, we, we know that there is a drug epidemic in the United States. Obviously, we get that. And so when you look at the reality that because of that drug epidemic in the U.S. and the fact that we do make up uh, a lot of people that are in prison, um, it's true. You get in there, you got now you got a record, um, you can't come out and get certain decent types of jobs, and so that plays into it. And of course, you know, not being able to get those positions and those jobs, now you have to really look at things and see why there may be an economic barricade. Then, of course, we look at the schools and the outdated education system that we have in this country. It's outdated, literally, almost pretty much for everybody. And so when you look at the African-American community in particular, um, it really hits, hits home. I think another thing that's really disturbing out of this number, even though on paper you see 52 grand uh, annually a year, another thing that we have to look at, too, is that the African-American community 
has a very high product consumption rate as well, meaning that uh, we're more tendency as a people to uh, eat out more, cook less at home, uh, have a very uh, tendency uh, to try to buy a lot of nice things, middle class community in particular, which predominantly uh, African American people make up, have a tendency to try to buy their pleasures, right? To buy and purchase things to subdue certain thought processes that affect uh, the people as a whole, right? Meaning that getting a nice car, even though it may cost a little more, or buying a nicer place to live in, even though you could afford something less, um, has a tendency to creep its way into the African American community a lot more than other communities. Uh, it, it is a known fact that people that have uh, certain levels of wealth um, really don't spend on an emotional level, right? They understand, like we talk about on this channel, that their credit is their income. They understand that being able to hold and be patient uh, on purchases will allow them to buy at a much lower rate and lower uh, percentage. And they understand that when nobody else is spending because of you know, the lack of finances moving around, that's when the wealthy people come out and start buying because they know that they're going to be able to absolutely get the deal of the century. Now, a lot of these things we do teach on the network. The Network Nation, the the Network Nation.com. We ask you to please go there, like, subscribe to the channel. While we do talk about a plethora of things to level up the financial net worth in the African American communities and most middle class communities, we show you the plays and how to to save on taxes. We absolutely preach and teach uh, the small business model. And just so you know, guys, I will say this. Since 2018, and of course with the epidemic of COVID, the one good side of it is that now more African-American people are going back to opening up their own businesses now, uh, more so than the last 10 to 15 years. And I'm going to reveal that to you for this reason. The Indian group, uh, Indian American group, which most people laughed at at one time, used to make fun of them because they always had like a 7-Eleven or a gas station or hotel, motel, roach, motel, holiday inn. And so now what we find out is that that same ethnic group has catapulted them way, their way to the top of the food chain with those very same hotel 7-Elevens, motels, and then of course those tech support people that everyone claims, oh man, I can't understand what they're saying when I call to make, you know, get my cell phone fixed or get my Samsung TV repaired. This particular group of people have elevated them way to the top of the food chain and they, you know, I guess have the last laugh. And so again, with that being said, we look at a lot of the Asian Americans, a lot of restaurants, a lot of technology sector uh, things. And that's another thing about uh, the middle class community. When we put ourselves together and we go to college, right? There is a certain way you need to go to college. There is an actual collegiate playbook. There are certain classes and courses that you absolutely must take in college. We don't just send you to college blindly here at the Network Nation. We encourage you to really go deep into what that college looks like because what we're finding out is that most people, by the time they come out of college, what they're going into, they're already behind. The technology in school is already outdated, right? And so this is the problem why people come out of college and they're not ready. And again, this is more likely in the African-American community. Like I said, only 22% have their college degree, which means it's not a lot of conversations in the African-American community about how to go to college and what types of classes to take so that it translate into a, a better uh, net worth and a better household income. And before I let you go, I will say this in closing. Um, we have to stop uh, making excuses. You know, one thing that I always say in sports, always take what the defense is willing to give you, right? So in football, since this is the height of football playoffs, if the defense is playing you to pass and they got all these guys back playing deep ball, deep ball, then run the ball. Get 10, get 15, get 20 yards in the carry. Seven, eight, nine yards carry. Run the ball. If the defensive line is playing you up tight and because they're worried about you running the ball, then throw the football. 
right? In the black African-American community, take what the defense is giving you. A lot of people say that there's so much blockage. And, 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 and what I'm telling you is that if you take what the defense is willing to give you in the African-American community, when they're throwing you plays with certain companies, certain businesses, you know, they want you to get minority certified, do it. Do it. If they have these empowerment zones where they want you to open up a, 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 a building in an empowerment zone or, or a store in an empowerment zone, don't fight the system. Do it. Open it up in the empowerment zone. If they're giving it to you, do it. Don't sit there and say, oh, well, I need to be living here. Or I need to be doing this or I need to be doing that. Okay. So before we close, uh, I want to say this. I do appreciate very much uh, what Dr. King, uh, Whitney Young, Stokely Carmichael, and uh, Adam Clayton Powell, uh, uh, Malcolm X, all of our legends uh, in the African American community and what they did. But I really want us to take this away from this particular episode. If we truly want those absolute leaders to rest in peace, then we have to, have to start maximizing the tools that are available to us as an African American community, even though the defense is still designed to stop you from scoring. Ronji, aka your console, the Network Nation, number one nation for the nation by the nation. Peace. Enjoy your holiday.